Hi guys, Zed here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I noticed that people tend to lose their patience when they watch longer videos. So today, I'm gonna try and keep it short and sweet. After a few trials on my Arduino Nano boards, may the fallen ones rest in peace. I was confident enough to step up my retrofitting game. I'd like to see it in the comments if anyone have shared at some point in time exactly the same issues as I had with my 3D printer. As you already know, I am the proud owner of a Creality Ender 3 printer. The poor thing has got 1500 to 2000 hours of effective printing. It didn't ask for much so far apart from 3-4 USB cables. We'll have to agree that design is not great. So. Why not do something about it? I used the Octopi since day one I had my printer, and that comes with a price. Whenever I had to print something, it was cable in, cable out. And again, and again. You will say that is normal wear and tear, but it's not. We'll have to agree to disagree. Change my mind. Getting back to today's printer cover. Best thing to do is let the video roll and it will catch up afterwards. By the way, if you haven't seen the prequel of this video, have a look. It will be worth your while, especially if you are into Arduinos. Well, never mind this one, this one already found its piece. Let's do this. We're going to start by removing the old connector. Out with the old, in with the new. Next, we cut the copper wires to size and we prepare the ends. The wires I'm using are 29 AWG enameled copper wires. You can experiment with other swords like Teflon coated or even different diameters. Whatever works best for you. Personally, I wouldn't go under 0.2 millimeters. They are very sturdy, you know. For those who never use something like this, I encourage you to give it a try. It was brought to my attention that the correct way to prepare those is to set the soldering station to 380 degrees and melt the enamel rather than scraping the ends with a craft knife. I always say, if it works, it's not stupid, but let's do it properly this time, or at least try. Once we've done that, we proceed with soldering the wires on the 3D printer board side. Next up, I'm measuring the breakout USB board for two reasons. First, I need to design an adapter to go on the printer case. And secondly, I need to know the dimensions for the new cutout. You will be able to download the STL for the adapter using the link in the description. If you have a look on my Thingiverse profile, you will also find the solder tip holder you see in the video. In order to check and see if our transplant was successful, we need to remove the existing board on the printer first. If you've never done it before, there are three things you have to do. Take several pictures of the wiring and keep it as reference. Mark the sequence of the wires and connectors. And last but not least, just be mindful that you are working with fragile electronics and thin wires. Don't pull anything too hard if you see it doesn't come off. I should have mentioned this from the beginning, but the board you saw me modifying is an old redundant board I had in my storage. That was the original board that came with the printer. I am marking out the shape of the connector on the housing, roughly where I think it will end up. We'll use a 3mm metal drill bit and a flatten a round needle file to tidy up the slots.
After we finished drilling and filing, we fixed the breakout assembly to the case. We thread the wires to their correct position and we repeat the steps we did at the other end. This time around, I am measuring the resistance of the wires to check the integrity of the solder. Once everything is out, we put the old modified board in and give it a test drive. Looks like it powers up all right. Let's see if the Octopi can connect to it. Yep, it's up and running. Please ignore the error message. As I already mentioned, the board is old and looks like it's lacking some safety features. Let's test if all motors are functional. I'm happy to call this a victory. All I have to do now is reiterate everything on the correct board. I'm not going to show you the whole process again, but I'm hoping what I already showed you is enough to spark your interest. Let's see how many of you are gonna change their ports after seeing this video. I strongly recommend it to everyone with a 3D printer. I'm not 100% sure if the newer generation of printers already come with this connector. If they don't, well, it's our duty to keep up with the times. Please take a moment to hit the subscribe button. That's only if you like the video. Well, actually I insist. For some reason, I tend to get more likes on my new videos than new subscribers. For my next two materials, I will change the pitch and do some woodworking. Thank you for watching and if you still haven't had enough content for the day, have a look at my other videos. Ta!